Hi. So you remember when you were like two years old and an adult would come up to you and they'd go that to your face and they'd be like, ah, I got your nose. And it was just their thumb and their fist, but you didn't know that because you were two. So you'd start freaking out. You'd be like, why, why did you take my nose? That's my nose. I need to start, I need that to breathe. I need that to smell. What am I going to do without that? Please give that back to me. What are you doing? We're doing the nose effect from Fallout. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a CG double of your face to composite over your footage. Along the way, I'll also teach you other VFX skills like how to paint out tracking markers and how to denoise your footage. If that interests you, stick around and see how it's done. If you've seen the new Fallout show on Prime, then you've already seen this effect done on Walton Goggins as the ghoul. He had a whole team of makeup artists help him with his effect. We're just going to do it ourselves. To do this effect, we're going to need Blender and DaVinci Resolve, both of which are free. We'll also need Keen Tools' Blender plugins, GeoTracker, and Face Builder, also free. I'll link all of this down below in the description. Finally, we're gonna to need to have footage of your actor or yourself performing the motion you want to apply the effect to. I recommend filming at a high shutter speed to get as little motion blur as possible. Tracking markers aren't necessary to put on your face, but the high points of contrast can help the computer later down the line when you're motion tracking. And with all of that out of the way, let's get into the effect. We'll start off in DaVinci Resolve. I've already made a new project that I've titled Ghoul VFX. In the Media tab, we'll import our footage. Next, we'll move to the Cut tab, where I'll put the footage into the timeline. My footage has come in sideways because I filmed it vertically for social media. To fix this, I will change the timeline resolution to vertical, and in the Edit page, I'll use the Transform tools to align the clip with the timeline. I have multiple takes in this clip, so I'll trim it down to just the part I want to edit. The next step is to export this entire clip as an image sequence so we can import it into Blender. To do this, go to the Delivery tab, change the format from MP4 to PNG, change the resolution to Vertical, add to Render Queue, and then Render All. If you did everything right, then your video should have exported with each frame as an individual PNG. Now we'll move from DaVinci to Blender. We'll go ahead and start a new scene, delete the default scene, and instead import a camera. Change the resolution of the camera to fit the resolution that you shot your clip at. In the Camera tab, enable Background Images. Add the image sequence that we had just created. Switch the mode from Image to Movie Clip. And now you should have your entire video visible through your camera. Hit N on your keyboard to bring up your tools. Select the Face Builder tool and click Create New Head. Under the View tab, click Add Images. Click the sequence we have just imported. Hit Auto Align, and already you can see that the mesh has done a pretty good job aligning with our reference image. Click and drag the handles on the mesh to fine-tune it to your face. Back in our original camera, reposition the mesh to align with our background image. In the Tools tab, select GeoTracker and select Create New GeoTracker. For the clip, select our imported sequence and then hit Analyze Clip. This will run back and forth through the clip just to analyze every single frame. Once that's done, make sure your mesh is still aligned with your footage. Click Start Pin Mode, and click and drag to fine-tune the positioning. Once I'm happy with the positioning of my mesh, I'll hit the Track to Start button to track the mesh to the footage, and then I'll hit the Track to End button to complete the track. Once the track is done, we can scroll through the timeline and see that it did a pretty good job of tracking to my face. If your track is slipping, you might want to consider adding high points of contrast in your footage, and be mindful of how much you are moving. Now we'll start removing the nose. To do this, I'll import an OBJ of a skull I found online. I'll leave a link to this model down in the description. Rescale and reposition the skull so it fits with the mesh of your head. In edit mode, I'll use the face select tool to isolate the nasal cavity from the rest of the 3D model. With the nasal cavity isolated, I'll reposition it to better fit with the head mesh. Back in the Face Builder tab, go under Model, change the topology type to Mid Poly, and deselect everything except for the upper face and the jaw. Next, we're going to duplicate the space we created. To do this, hit L to select all faces of the mesh, Shift D to duplicate, and P separate by selection. Now we'll have a separate mesh we can use to edit. Using this new mesh we created, go into Edit Mode and select all the edges surrounding the nose cavity. Right-click, and under Loop Tools, hit Relax. 
Loop Tools is also an add-on, but it comes pre-installed with Blender. You just need to activate it in your preferences. If necessary, select the nose cavity mesh, go into edit mode, and delete any geometry that intersects with the face. Select both the nose cavity and the face mesh and hit Ctrl J to join them into one mesh. By selecting two edges and hitting F, you can bridge faces along gaps to connect the nose to the face. Generally, it's good practice to make sure your new geometry only has four sides per face, but for this application, it's not a big deal. By hitting Ctrl R on our keyboard, we can add more geometry to work with later. Now we have our nose cavity added to our mesh, but the seam is very visible, so I'm going to go in with a sculpt tool and use a smooth brush to smooth it out. At this point, you should now have a modified face mesh tracked to your footage. Our next step is giving this face some texture, so we're going to go over to the Shading tab. In the Node Editor, add an Image Texture node. Connect the image texture into the color socket of our material, and change the texture to our clip. With Node Wrangler enabled in Preferences, hit Ctrl-T and change the texture coordinate to Window. Use Shift-D to duplicate our Image Texture node, and create a new image texture. I'll call this one Skin, and I'll increase the resolution. If you haven't already, change your render engine from EV to Cycles, and if you have the option, select GPU Compute. In Edit Mode, hit A to select your entire mesh, and hit U to unwrap. With the new Image Texture node selected, hit Bake. Once the bake is done, replace our clip texture with our new skin texture. The texture should now be attached to our mesh. Because I added tracking markers, I'm going into the Texture Paint tab and erasing all these with the Clone Stamp tool. If you didn't use tracking markers, then you can skip this step. Next, I use the Clone Stamp tool to erase any leftover parts of the nose, mainly the nostrils and any shadows. Using the same process, I'll clean up the inside of the nose. Using the draw brush, I'll add some subtle red to simulate raw skin. Now our face is ready to render. Using area lights and an HDRI, I do my best to match the lighting on my footage. If you can't see your reference footage when you're in rendered view, Make sure you have Transparency turned on in the Render tab. Once I'm happy with my lighting, I'll go into View Layer Properties and enable any layers I want to export. Here I enabled a Vector Pass to use for Motion Blur, but I didn't end up using it in the final composite. To get an idea for what each layer does, you can view the different layers in your rendered viewport. Once you're happy with your settings, go to the Output Settings and change the output format from PNG to EXR. For my render, I put my noise threshold at 0.2 and my max samples at 200, but this may vary depending on your scene. Now you can go to the Render tab and render your animation. This part takes a moment. Once your render is done, you can go back into DaVinci Resolve and import it through the Media tab. If you did everything right, you should get a terrifying monstrosity like this. With your footage selected, create a new Fusion clip and then go into the Fusion tab. Drag your render into the node workspace, and overlay it onto your footage using a merge node. In the inspector window, change the layer to combined. If your render is bigger than your footage, use a transform node to scale it back down. Blender exports in a linear color space, and I film my footage in RAW. So to match these, I'll add a Cineon Log node before the merge node, and choose Log to Linear. I'll add a Cineon Log node after the merge node, and this time, use Lin to Log. Now our render and footage are in the same color space. The next step is to color correct the render, so I'll pull up a window with just the original footage to have as reference. I adjusted the red values in the saturation to make it look more like my skin, and then adjusted the levels so the black and white points match my footage. You'll probably go back and change this a few more times, but for now this is a good place to start. Next I want to motion track my footage so that way I have something to attach a mask to later on. To do this I'll add a planar track node. Draw a mask around the points you want to track. Here I'm masking around the nose, making sure to include some tracking markers so the computer has something to reference. Change the tracker type to hybrid point slash area, and then track. If you're happy with your track, then hit create planar transform.
This will create a new node. Now we can disconnect the planar tracking node. With the merge node selected, create a new polygon mask and mask around the nose in your render. I accidentally put the mask directly on the render node, so I'll just copy and paste this. Use the soften edge slider to blend the seams. Next, take the planar transform node we created earlier and run our mask through that into the merge node. Now if we scroll through the timeline, we can see that just our nose is appearing on our footage. Go back and adjust your color correction as needed. After the color correction node, add a blur node to soften the image. When zooming in, you can see that there is noise in our footage that's not present on our render. To reduce this noise, I'll use a remove noise node. Using the R, G, and B keys on my keyboard, I can sort through the individual red, green, and blue color channels and remove noise as needed. Next, I'll put a film grade node right before the media out node. This will bring noise back into the footage, but also put it on our rendered layer, further cementing the realism. You can mess around with the strength and texture of the film grain, but I'm pretty happy with the default settings. At this point, if you don't have tracking markers on your footage, then you're done. If you do have tracking markers on your footage, I'll show you how to paint those out real quick. The first step is to plug your footage into a tracker node. Use the inner box to frame the marker you want to track. Use the outer box to tell the program how much area to cover when searching for this marker. Then, hit Track Forward. If the marker slips at all, you can pause the track and reposition it as needed. Add a paint node after the tracker node. Select the clone brush and select Stroke at the top of the window. I found that increasing your brush softness can yield better results. Alt left click to determine where to clone from and then paint over your marker. Under the modifier tab, select the paint stroke we just created. If there's a second stroke there with nothing on it, you can delete it. Under Stroke Controls, right click on Center, Connect to, Tracker 1 Path, Position. Now your paint stroke should follow your motion track. And because the clone source changes too, your paint stroke will adjust with the lighting. Repeat this step for each tracking marker. The tracker node can store multiple tracks, but you'll need a new paint node for each marker. After painting out all the markers, this is what my footage looks like. I excluded the ones on the nose because those will be covered by the CG nose. And after a final color grade, this is what my shot looks like. And there you go, you're all done. Bye.